We're in the midst of the largest wealth transfer we've ever seen in our lifetime. Not only our lifetime, but ever. And there's some major driving forces behind this. Number one driving force is a recession. We're coming into major economic headwinds. And whenever you get major economic headwinds and recessions, there is a wealth transfer. Number two is baby boomers. Baby boomers is the wealthiest generation we've ever had. And they've lived in the best times with the stock markets continuously growing, the property markets continuously growing in their generation, more than with ever experienced before and a long time bull market with this. And also, we're hitting a new age of technology. Every time we shifted, like from being agricultural in, into the industrial revolution, we're now going into a digital revolution and there'll be a massive wealth shift with that. Without a question of a doubt, property is part of that wealth shift and we're seeing a big wealth shift already in the UK. And in this video, what I'm gonna be sharing with you is some facts and statistics around how we're seeing this wealth shift from the south to the north of England. By the way, before I get any hate in the comments, I am born in London. I live 20 minutes away from London. I love London. So this is no a bias, a view for mine. This is just showing you facts and statistics. And what I'm gonna do in this video, make sure you stay around to the end, is I'm gonna show you how you can capitalize on this big wealth shift, so on this wealth transfer. So if you wanna be part of this wealth transfer, capitalize on that and make the most of it, stay around to the end. But your first step towards that wealth transfer is making sure you hit that like button and make sure you smash the subscribe if you haven't done it already. That is surely the most transformational thing you can do to grow your wealth. But all jokes aside, let's get into some of the data around this wealth transfer. So let's look at property data. I'll put a link below property data. It's a really fantastic site that you can get lots of property data from and it really helps you get in statistics and analytics. You wanna make strategical decisions in your business based on facts and stats, not based on your emotions and like your, your, your feelings. So make informed decisions. If we look at the data, so let's look at property data. Let's look at London. So from 09, as you can see on this chart, London had a big rally from 09 to about 2014, 2015. Loads of things happened in between then what slowed London down. One was the price per earnings ratio. Number two was a load of tax and a load of things that come into this. Look, if you want to learn more about this, we'll put a link below for my next workshop. We discuss this on the workshop in depth. Uh, but London, you can see, is kind of plowed. It's had a bit of growth, but it's been moderate in comparison of what London's been in the past. And very similar with the southeast. So you see the southeast coming out of the 08 crash. You see it's had a steady run up. But what you've got to look at for me is the southeast over the, has been growing stronger than London. So in the last few years, and it's because we're getting that migration from London, so it's making it stronger. As London become unaffordable, people are migrating out from London, and it's pushing the prices up in the southeast. But for me, that will plateau. There's no way people are going to pay more money to live on the outskirts of London than they are in London. If it starts becoming more expensive to live outside of London, people are going to move back to London. In my opinion. But one of the first rallies we see coming away from London, and especially since we see faster trains coming in, more technology coming in, people being able to work and do like video calls, because as we're coming in from the 08 crash, technology is really, really advancing. You've got to imagine, it's only around 08 sort of time when the iPhone got invented. In the last crash, I'm not even sure if the iPhone was here, but it's around that time it got invented. So tech has been marching on like gangbusters. And as we've been getting more and more tech, this enabled people to be able to operate and work anywhere. Globalization of the world, making the world much more local and if you look one of the first areas got hit by this was the Midlands so we see a nice steady growth up in the Midlands in this property data but again when you compare this to Yorkshire and Humber so going more further north it stayed flat up to 2015 and as I said these changes in 2015 like the tax changes section 24 we had the stamp duty change on second homes we had a lot of changes that come in around that time and you can see these further away from London where house price in comparison to household wages was more along start to grow from 2016 but the infrastructure went into these areas so the government announced this leveling up the playing field around 2015 also in the powers of the north deal and they went to manchester first and you've seen since 2015 manchester has been either the top or in the top few top capital appreciation areas in the uk and this is it i feel we've got a last chance to capitalize on this opportunity of this wealth shift because Manchester in 2015 could still pick properties up for 60K. 
you're more around 200k in Manchester now. And you can see this playing out across the whole of the north and this wealth transfer happening. As you've seen London plateau, you've seen the north grow. And if we look at even the northeast, so the northeast was last because it didn't have the investment from the powers on the north. But in the last few years, that's coming in mixed with the fact that people are working from anywhere and technology's ex excelling. And COVID actually pushed that on even more for allowing people to work from anywhere and people's race for space and race for living in more comfort. Like So in, in Stockton on Tees, my the average wage is £33,000 according to Plum Point, I think it's called, and the average property is around 150 ish So you can see it's in line with people's wages. So you can live a good lifestyle in the area on the same wage. London's average wage is around 39,000 and the average property is around 550, 600,000. So you can see the lifestyle that people are craving. If they can work from anywhere, more and more people go in different locations, plus the Paris or the North deal and the infrastructure getting put into these areas. Just in my area alone in the Northeast, we've got the biggest free port going in, a gigafactory going in. We've got carbon renewable energy center going in. The treasury is moving to Darlington. There is low of infrastructure going in that's bringing back this level of playing field. We're gonna stay on here, we're gonna show you some of the history of the UK and the wealth distribution why, and why so many people have the short-term vision and why this is, for me, a massive exciting opportunity. We've saved the strongest capital growth area since 2015. You see on this chart, as soon as that power to the North deal hit around 2014, 2015, you can see the Northwest growing. It's had a massive growth. Uh, Manchester and Liverpool in there with the top growers constantly for the last sort of seven, eight years. So it's not a little short term blip. For me, it was like the one minute mile, Roderick Bannister broke the one minute mile and all of a sudden everybody broke that one minute mile. They invested in Manchester first and it was like the one minute mile. They realized infrastructure and jobs and they could create this industry there with the new tech. And that's like a one minute mile. And you've seen it spread across the north to Liverpool, to Leeds. It's now going to Newcastle and it's now coming into the northeast. The northeast has been the last to be hit, but for me, that is one of the biggest opportunities that's still left there. And it's not a bias of you because that's my remote investment location. It's just a facts view. I actually don't like the growth there. I prefer the last decade I've been investing in Northeast, there's been no capital growth apart from the last two years. And I preferred that because there's more opportunity for the BRR deals. I'm not gonna talk too much about that now. You can watch a video about BRR deals here. But as I said, I feel this could be the last time you could build this wealth. Like, if you look at Manchester, who would like a time machine? Go back to Manchester at the start of 2015. Who would like a time machine to go to London back in 19, in 20 years ago when properties was averaging 79,000, well, 25 years ago, when it was about 70, 80K? We'd all love that. That time machine is here for you on this video in the form of the DeLorean. And that time machine is the Northeast, Wales, some of the Northwest still, but a lot of that's already advanced. And these areas have not been developed and they're coming on for development. But then you match this, what's going on in the property market with this headwind. We're, we're potentially coming to an end of a long-term debt cycle. And we're, whenever you see recessions, recorrections, there's wealth shifts. And the biggest companies, some of the biggest companies we you know of to this day was created in a downturn. So companies like Microsoft, Apple, Netflix, Mailchimp, Airbnb, Uber, all these companies was made in recessionary times. So, and they're usually, so like Uber, like Airbnb, it's when there's a shift in technology, like Apple, like Microsoft, there's a shift in technology. And the moment's a shift in technology in the way we communicate, the way we work, this is what's leveling up them playing field and the government pushing the leveling up the playing field agenda. This is what's making this opportunity in the North. If you don't live there, don't panic. This is what I do, I don't live there. I was born in London, live just on the outskirts of London now, I invest 250 miles away and tech is enabling me to do that. But how you enable yourself to do that is what you need to do is invest in yourself first before you think about investing in assets. I heavily invested in my education. Listen, this is what Warren Buffett says about investing in yourself. Well, I'll give you two pieces of advice. I'd invest as much in myself as you can. I mean, you're, you're your own biggest asset by far. I mean, you've got, you've got all kinds of potential, all the people in this room, you, you know, you're lucky to be in this country, gotten a good education, but most people go through life using up a very, very small part of their potential. And so anything you do that invests in yourself, uh, is, that's the best investment you can possibly make. Because you are your biggest asset. Some, it really surprises me. When you pay, you pay attention. When you pay, invest in yourself, you will drive yourself forward. So look to learn in this situation and get the right strategy and the right plans for what you're doing going forward. Don't be shiny penny by other people what they're talking about. Get the right plan for you. As I said, make sure you stay until the end because we're gonna show you how you can figure out the right plan for you. 
But if you can't wait to the end, in the link, what we'll do is, I love helping people. I give people discovery calls. So if you want a discovery call and figure out how we can help you, I can help you as a business, free, there's no sales on them. I have got coaching programs, but I will not set it on this call. But if you just want a call to help you discover where you are in your journey, how you can take them actionable steps moving forward, the link will be in below. Just tap on it, discovery call, fill in the information, and I'll give you a free, no sales, no obligations call worth £350. My one-on-one mentoring is at least £350. I love helping people. Uh, so if I get a client from this sometimes, great. If I don't get a client, I get somebody who helped them on a journey, great. And it could be to do with mindset, to do with business, property, anything you choose. So if you want help developing yourself, give the link in the description a click. But we've always talked with this recession going on, everybody worries and gets nervous. And don't get me wrong, you have to be cautious. Don't say not be nervous, but you need to try to get some anticipation. You need to want to try and understand the market and position yourself well. That famous quote by Wayne Gretzky, where he says, the reason he done so well and he's the best hockey player of all time is he didn't skate towards a puck. He always skated to where the puck was going to go. And this is what you want to do. Use these sorts of videos. Invest in yourself. Make sure you can position yourself to skate towards where the puck's going to go. Don't be left behind with old thinking. So many people are left behind, like the companies like uh, like taxi drivers when Uber's coming along. These black cabs are holding on to their old dream and Uber come along. Like Netflix, a big company got made in that time. Blockbuster went bust because they held on to the old thing. Do, make sure you continuously evolve your thinking and skate towards where the puck's going, not towards directly where the puck's at. If you do this, you're going to survive through this and not only survive, also potentially thrive. But at the moment, as I said, everybody's stuck in where they're at the moment. And the property market's been on steroids the last two years. We've had, let me get a list of this. We've had tons of money printing. We have had low interest rates, record low interest rates. We've had stamp duty release with 5% deposits. We've had the shutdown at the start of the original pandemic had a bottle chain, a supply chain bottleneck because all the agents shut and everybody opened up, had a bit of money in their pocket and bought and we've never replenished that supply chain. We've also had accidental savers because nobody was going on holiday, nobody was traveling to work but earning the same monies, getting mortgage holidays and, and credit card holidays. So we had accidental savers. Then mixed for the race for space. As more people was allowed to work remotely and digitally, you just see people migrating and migrating. My neighbors moved from Croydon to here. They live in, they work in the city. They moved from Croydon to here in Brent which is just on the outskirts because of the they got a bigger property soon as one of them worked for Barclays and soon as we come out of the first lockdown Barclays said look you can only come into the office two days a week even once this is over his wife also got told she worked for an accountancy firm the same thing so they moved out to Colchester further away and they said we'll suffer a bigger commute because we only got to go two days a week for more space and a bigger nicer home and this is happening more and more and as we go more and more into this like this web 3.0 this is going to happen even more because more companies are going to go into the internet and and this has just been sped up by the pandemic and again i'm talking about this wealth shift from south to north so if you look at this data here from home track look at london's growth it's not been there in comparison to the rest of the country. It's been the lowest growth you've seen in the UK in this last two years. And again, this is price per earnings ratio. And again, these other factors that I was talking about earlier on. And as I said, where we're going into this headwind with this, we're definitely, in my opinion, we're either in a recession or going into a recession. And the, the, the tools that the Bank of England and the central banks use when we're going into a recession usually is print more money, lower interest rates. Well, because the back of the last pandemic and off the back of the recession before that, they'd lowered interest rates as low as they can go and they've printed more money, which created a massive amount of inflation. We're now getting inflationary pressures and the banks are having to raise interest to try and combat that. I'm not gonna go too much into that because you can watch more about that on the video I don't, i'm not sure what side that's on but you can watch more about it on the video there if you want to watch that but we're raising interest rates this is what's this is what's causing us the headwind and the recession is coming but what you want to look at is not what has happened in the recent like everybody's on a high at the moment loads of liquidity was in the markets everybody was stock market was booming the property markets were booming and what you want to do is build these all-weather portfolios whether you're in the stock market in property and what you want to do is get yourself away from long-term like short-term markets conditions and try and study the long term and everybody stuck from the 1996 up to 2016 with london it grew 518 percent london when you look at the longer term of that it never grew that's that before and the wealth is distribution between London and the North wasn't that wide pre-1980s. It was only out of 1980s that started happening. And as we come out of the Industrial Revolutionary times, 
this happened like we lost the world leading superpower to America after World War Two. And as we started losing the oil, uh, the coal, sorry, and it wasn't no longer the steam engine power in the world and these different things, we slowly see the industries come out from the north with the steel, the oil, the textiles, the export, and it become a business hub in London. But when it became a business hub in London in the 70s and 80s, there wasn't the internet, there wasn't all these things, and the prices were still reasonable in London. So everybody needed a London office so they could jump on the tube and have a meeting and jump back in your office again with before the time of Zoom, as I said. But now, because of the prices of the London offices and because we can communicate in a different way the London office are no longer so needed we've become globalized uh, it was a business hub and people flew into London to do business flew out but now because we're globalized with technology and the world is flatter it's no longer as important to have that London office and just have a check of this what Ray Dado talks about long-term and short-term debt cycles people getting stuck in you want to zoom that out debt swings occur in two big cycles one takes about five to eight years and the other takes about 75 to 100 years while most people feel the swings, they typically don't see them as cycles because they see them too up close, day by day, week by week. So when you zoom that out, look at the history of the UK. From the 1970s, the 1700s, sorry, all up to the 1900s, we had a long run of even wealth distribution. You had Samuel Crompton, he made the spinning mule and basically revolutionized the technology within creating textiles and across Bolton and the, the Liverpool and all these areas we produced loads of textiles at a volume we had in the northeast the impact of the steam the first rail line commercial rail line was between Darlington and Stockton an area that I invest in at the moment and the steam engine and our technology of that really helped us make steamboats and power the world and coal the coal was heavily in the north I'm just going to read this quickly. Look, the Industrial Revolution, which began in Britain in the 18th century and was based on the availability of coal to power steam engines. International trades expanded exponentially when coal-fed steam engines were built for railways and steamships. During the Victorian era, coal was cheaper than and much more efficient than wood fuel and most to, like, to fuel most steam engines. As central uh, and northern England uh, continued a uh, bliss with abundance of coal sorry tongue tied there it really put the wealth in these areas and if you go to these areas you'd see the the the, the infrastructure and the, the the architecture in these areas from the victorian times is absolutely beautiful but then after world war ii when the coal wasn't the main the main driver the industry just went from the north and it became the london hub as i said but again, if you rewind back even further, work this then stopped people from working from homes and start working in factories and working from fields into factories. And the fields got driven by steam engines to take over manual labor. So this changed, people used to make textiles and different things working from home. And then all of a sudden, they're now in factories producing this en masse. And we're going for the same shift again. We then started working from offices in central London. Now they work, people working from home again because it's digital revolution. Again, when this is happening, we're leveling up the playing field with this tech revolution. If you look on this Savills chart and you look at the uplift by region, it tells a story of itself and you can see where the most growth is coming in the property world. With all this information, what do you do? How do you move forward? So first of all, you've got, if you don't live in a goal, if you live in one of these areas already, just get going, buy properties. You want to look at the property delta matrix. I've done a video on this here, but it's how you build wealth in any times and any, any, any market climate. Uh, so make sure you buy the right style properties, but a solid foundation of single let properties is key for me. That's just going to be your bread and butter stuff to support you doing the bigger stuff. Then, if, if you live in one of these areas, great. If you don't live in one of these areas, make sure you watch this video, wherever it is around here, and we'll show you how you pick your gold mine location. But pick one of these areas, got the infrastructure, the stuff in, as I said, property data's in, in the comments below, in the description below. Have a look in property data at areas, the infrastructure, the planned infrastructure, the rail links, all this information, you can get this in one place and make an informed decision about an area. Don't panic about investing remotely. As I said, I've got a workshop coming up again soon. Put your name down on the waiting thing, we'll email you when that is, or it might, if you watching this at the time of running one the link in the description will give you a direct access to this and we'll go through how you find these areas how you find deals in these areas how you then do everything from this great revolutionary thing from 08 this is the biggest difference from 08 to now is these things and it's enabled us to globalize the world make the world local and invest from anywhere 
And then when you invest in, as I said, you want to make your all weather portfolio. Look, Ray Dado talks about his all weather portfolio. I also talk about my all weather portfolio, where you want to have the distribution between the right style assets and a multiple streams of income from different asset class and diversify that. But that diversification starts off with your foundational single debt properties. As I said, I won't go on too much about that because you've got a video in the description for that. But listen, Thank you so much for staying with me. My why is to live on my terms and my mission is to help as many people live on their terms using property as a vehicle to do that. So if you've not done it already, please share this video out. Please hit the bell, the subscribe button, the bell icon and give it a big thumbs up. And remember, if you don't evolve your ideas, you never live on your own terms. So evolve your ideas, live on your own terms and have an amazing day.